You know, in terms of technology, new technology may enable you to tell different or better stories. I think there is some truth to that in the sense that, you know, if you go back to, you know, our history at Irrational, we did a game called System Shock 2 many years ago, and it was a first-person shooter. It was about, came out in 99, and we sort of started the baby steps of what we try to do, which is telling stories visually in, in the environment around you. But our graphics ability was so limited that we could tell only hint at some of the sto visual stories you wanted to tell. So, you know, fast forward to 2007 when we did Bioshock, the, the ability to render fairly real, realistic scenes around you and the kind of detail we could put into the world. You, know, you go into somebody's bedroom and you can put literally, you know, dozen ob two dozen objects in there that's specific to that room if you, need, if you wanted to, if you chose to. Um, you know, that's very powerful in terms of being able to tell a, um, a static visual story, which is something we try to do in, in Bioshock 1. In Infinite, I think we're trying to, t you know, retain that storytelling from Bioshock 1 in terms of these static visual scenes you see around you, but also bring characters and AIs into that storytelling as much as we can. You know, the fact that you're a character as Booker, the fact that you're with this character Elizabeth, the fact that you can interact with all these AIs around you and some, you know, and we, in, in Infinite, AIs don't, all AIs don't necessarily just attack you when they see you. Sometimes they maybe do something else entirely. Sometimes they may be staging an ambush for you. Sometimes they may be completely innocent and you have to sort of figure out what's going on. But what it allows us to do is you can observe these characters and, and they're telling you visually, um, you know, in, in motion a story around you as well. Um, you know, in terms of how we sort of balance story and gameplay in these games, I think that it's, it's an ever-evolving um, process. We, we always try to integrate, whenever we can, the story and the gameplay. Like, for instance, it was very important to us that what Elizabeth was happening with the character Elizabeth in the narrative was reflected in what she did in gameplay because we wanted her not just to be a character that appeared when the you know in when, when we needed a narrative moment we wanted her to be integrated into the entire experience and um, you know so she has these abilities to open these tears which are sort of you know um, windows to sort of other realities and um, you know and that happens there's a moment you know there's, there's a moment in the uh, demo where she's sort of trying to all she's trying to do is heal this horse by bringing in like a healthier version of that horse from another reality and she ends up opening a window to uh, um, something that leads to real catastrophic danger for Booker and Elizabeth and that's demonstrating that she doesn't have full control over these powers but also in the combat experience you know that's a sort of narrative moment but also in the combat experience as a um, she's able to sort of really change the combat space by opening these tears in the combat space and bringing in things that aren't in, in the current reality. That could be like, you know, a new skyline, or that could be more weapons, or that could be reinforcements, or that could be, you know, any number of things that you actually change the combat space. So that's really important. You know, sometimes we have an idea and it doesn't entirely fit the vibe and the feel of the game. And generally what we do is we say, is there a way that we could you know, alter this, you know, on a gameplay side, or even sometimes we alter it on the story side to sort of make sure there's unity. Because, you know, you're, if you're playing a Bioshock game and all of a sudden you come across like, you know, a team of NBA basketball players, it's off-putting and strange. And um, you don't, you know, you want to make sure the gamer sort of doesn't get thrown out of the game, you know, mentally thrown out of the experience. Because it's a really a fine line you walk with keeping players in the game. And a lot of times there have been things like, well, you know, well, we should put some references to a modern, you know, TV show or something. Like people will come up with an idea like that or somebody would suggest that. And it's, it's not, I don't think Bioshock's a game where you want to sort of do that. I think you have to keep it very tight and very integrated into its own world without sort of stepping out to the fourth wall, past the fourth wall. Um, you know, the most important thing about Elizabeth to us in terms of Making sure the gamer's experience is protected is, you know, it, is um, is that, that Elizabeth feels integrated into, with the player is that she, you're, she's not a character you need to protect. Um, you know, in terms of her being, you know, weaker character, I think she's actually, you know, in, she's the most powerful entity in in Colombia. But most importantly, you have control over what she does with her powers. You know, she's not going to sort of run up and do something that you don't want her to do. You know, everything she does in the game that, that actually has an impact on the gameplay um, is something that you sort of are sort of, you know, directing her to do because, you know, she, um, 
you know, she sort of leaves it up to Booker to drive the, the combat experience because he has a lot more experience in that space. You know, they're partners going through this experience in terms of the narrative, but in terms of the actual gameplay, you know, the player is Booker is very much in control of that situation. So that's something we thought very carefully about um, because I don't think generally experiences that where you're protecting somebody from getting harmed or where you're, um, or somebody else, you know, another NPC is sort of driving the game for you and you're sort of following them through the game, those are not fun experiences. Um, so we're very cognizant of that. Even like, you know, um, in terms of, you know, Booker deciding, you know, one big thing is we wanted to make sure that um, unlike uh, the first Bioshock where you sort of, you were getting a lot of instructions over the radio about what you're supposed to do and other people were telling you what to do. Uh, which worked in Bioshock 1, given you know, the nature of the sort of what you found out about yourself in that game. We really wanted Booker to sort of be driving his own quest whenever we could. Um, so you see in the demo, he's like, oh, you know, the, there's Comstock House. He actually points at it, you know, he said, let's go there. And you have a moment there where Elizabeth comes up in front of you. She says, well, Comstock House is that way, but there's maybe more supplies that way. You know, what do you want to do? And she's just basically serving as, you know, inf she's giving you some information there. And you can go either way, but it's always up to the player to drive the experience. We think that's really important. I think the experience, you know, Booker, playing Booker is an interesting thing. Playing any character in a game, especially in a first person game, is an interesting thing because it's a mix really of this character Booker and what the player brings to it. And I think that's what's great about first person shooters and first person gaming in general is there's this weird, um, this weird mix of, um, of, of, of this character in you. And we try to walk that line really carefully because you know I always say, you know, you're building this we're building this relationship between Booker and Elizabeth, but we're also really trying to build this relationship between the player and Elizabeth. And so you, Booker is a very strong character, and there's going to be really interesting things which I'm not going to tell you about. You're going to find out about him. Like very, he's got a very um, dark past. You know, for instance, you know, he was, as I said, he was a Pinkerton agent busting up strikes. He was an Indian fighter. You know, he was at the Battle of Wounded Knee. Um, there's a a lot of interesting st dark things in his past that you're going to find out about that's going to have an effect on what happens in his story in Colombia. But you also don't want to sort of force too much sort of decision making of Booker on the player. You really want to let pl the player drive that. So you know in the experience you have these two characters Booker and Elizabeth but you really you want Booker to be in charge but on top of that you really want the player to be in charge of what's going on because I think gamers gamers are in experiences so they can be the guy going through this amazing experience with this woman in this world, right? That's what it's about at the end of the day. It's this sort of fantasy of being another person, going somewhere where you can't go in real life, being with people, these amazing people that you, know, that you don't often come across or ever come across in, in the real world. And I think that's really important, but you also have to remember that it's the player playing that part and mixing that, the player and that character together as one is really important.